Okay, thought I'd get a uh, cup of coffee and go to work, okay? But, uh, <clears throat> in essence, see, at 71, it's by means of reasoning, right, that one can then look at dreams and see what they portend for good or bad. And later, the issue of divination, to set before men by the gods as the most good, both of the present and the future. So, uh, certainly the idea of setting forth what's good and how it may come down to particular men is the issue. So, what's the, here's the issue. However it is pictured, however it's pre presented, So, this is the issue of providence, right? Given this, how can you describe how it comes down in particular to these things? Or anything that is intelligent? Right? That's the issue. But by what steps, by what reasoning? And so what we're dealing with if someone's coming along and saying that what you're really talking about here is how that providence really functions in this realm, which is the sublunary or terrestrial realm. calls this the sublunary gods, right? They're said to be nine gods you can assume are in a certain linkage. And this should give an account of this very issue. Right. And at 40E, he says, of course, there isn't any demonstration of it, and we'll accept custom. And so, uh, we've been playing with this issue for several Friday nights. And, uh, is it possible to take uh, Proclus's commentary on the time is, and see what he says about this linkage, these gods, and he calls the first one Uranus, or heaven, heaven with a capital H, right. Gaia, or Earth,
Moreno should die, and so on, all the way down to Hera. And these are the nine sublunary gods. So is it possible to get into him, and he's reflecting on all the thinkers that he thinks are significant dealing with this issue, is it possible to abstract from it? Because it would be fun to see if we can see that, especially in the section, see, he's going here. And this is the realm of dreams. And this is the realm of divination. Is it possible to see a way of drawing from these people a way to make those connections, essentially? And according to this document, which I got after great labor, this is an attempt of trying to put it together for that purpose. And, uh, uh, I can give classes later, by the way, for those of you who have any interest in scholarship, because I'm one of the few people <clears throat> who's been authorized to teach Slapbergenbund, right? Such Bergestanathin. I'm a very few of, of us are in that. And I'm authorized to teach it by a very famous Slapdorpsian. So, in any case, this is the work. And the first section is pulling out the essence of the gods, as mentioned by Proclus and Iamblichus, and just stating in terms that are most important singularly for us to make this connection. Right? And that goes, therefore, to page two. And then after page two, Accordingly, if you pick up that paragraph, um, this is also drawn from Proclus in other places, but uh, certain key places, especially, um, I think the image in page three is very important. Um, So, um, <laughs> and uh, some of you may recognize that some of the sources for this go back to uh, Heraclitus and Pluto. <laughs> Plato, excuse me, that's what Plato. Oh. I've been watching some films with my grandson. <laughs> and he's into Pluto, so it was only natural that I made that mistake. So, um, can we read? I don't know. I'll read. Oh, well. I think it's beautiful. I like the typing. Well, I think it would help if we try to I mean, if pick up okay. the images because it might be worthwhile. So, well, okay, how about the first one? All right. I like the fair. Uh, the path of providence from pure goodness to man. The axis of reality runs through the center of the cosmos with a radiance of goodness that is brilliant and pure, reaching from the highest intelligible heaven to all that which possesses a terrestrial earthly existence. Right, so that's this, see, that's this realm. Right. And it's important that you read the word essence as that usual word or see it. Okay. This is churning about itself for propolis, right? It's an active, it's an axis, but it's turning about 
it can reflect upon itself. See, it's in a kind of power that it's not stationary, it isn't just light, right? And see, together with the illuminating power, it's the leader of the essence that is unapparent because it has yet to manifest itself in the terrestrial world. That's its goal. And this is what we're getting, manifesting this. We're now going to see it in the terrestrial world. Um, now, that's what he calls the union of Uranus and Gaia, right in here. Now he's going to make a couple of s special steps. Go ahead. As the union of an Usia, or of an essence, that turns upon itself, its power extends it in a multiplicative fashion, bringing the gift of perfection. I like that. Let me read it again. As the union of an essence that turns upon itself, its power extends it in a multiplicative fashion, bringing the gift of perfection. Okay. Here is the hold nurse. It, hold it, hold okay. It. Yeah, go ahead. No. Or, or could you read it again with Lucia instead of essence? Sure. Well, as the union of an Lucia that turns upon itself, its power extends it in a multiplicative fashion, bringing the gift of perfection. See, for it to reach here, see, for this to reach here, it has to break down to each. Right? So that one has to become a many, and this is the principle, the first principle of taking this axis and saying, hey, the next big stage is that the power extends in a multi multiplicative fashion, and this brings the gift of perfection. And therefore, uh, Gaia, or Earth, is said to be the nurse of perfection because all perfection, see, all per see each one of these people are going to get some, something that is going to benefit them. And in principle, that's some aspect of excellence. So it has to be something that breaks later. It has to be broken, but this is the principle of multiplicative power. Go ahead. Hmm. The union and the power of multiplication finds expression as it divides the motion in both the totality of intellect, soul, and nature, as well as through its expression in parts. Hmm. Now, see, for this to be multiplied, there has to be some union about each of the parts, right? There has to be some union of its parts. Uh, and each of the parts, must have a two things, of course. It must be defined, it must have a definition, or a measure, and therefore, it has a motion, both as a whole and parts. And that's said to be the function of these twin gods, Ocean and Teths. Mm. Now these are all, now the, this is the totality, and we're still in the realm ideas, intellectual ideas. Okay, go ahead. The division of the partial from the totality. Because, okay, now you have to make a division in all of these, mm -hmm. right? So that you can go further because this is in general; these are total, right? So therefore, what do you got to do? Each of these has to be broken up. 
in as many as you need, right? Because before it was just, go ahead. The division of the partial from the totality is at first only intellectually. See, here it's only intellectual. Okay, go ahead. Since before anything can become manifest, it must have had a prior mode of being among what is intelligible. Yeah. The division proceeded from the highest to the lesser, and so the order, the division proceeded from the highest. The point is, once you make divisions, are, are you just cutting up the pieces in equal parts? Or do the, can the parts be arranged hierarchically? If they can be arranged hierarchically, you also have a progression. So the division proceeded from the highest to the lesser, and so the order was hierarchical. The order then passes if it, to see, the... If it proceeds from the highest to the lesser, that means it is hierarchical. Right. Yes. Okay, go ahead. The order then passes to the power that produces progressions. Hold it. Please, continue. The order then the order then passes to the power that produces progression. Right. Now we see it has to pass to this. Setting progressions in any contrasting manner. Setting progressions in any contrasting manner forms natural analogies. Right. If you have any <coughs> any hierarchy and you have another hierarchy, you can then make comparisons, can you not, between them? And if they're arranged hierarchically, progression hierarchically, that's the basis of analogy. The principles thus formed intellectually find their counterpart in the terrestrial realm as physical productive principles. Here, the essence of the cause of generation finds expression as the principle of all pregnancy and prolific life. The perfection now reaches the progression of prolific life. See, without porkies, you have to have something that will descend now into the physical. Right. And that's the role of porkies, right? The perfection did you agree, right? Right. The right prolific life, etc. Uh, perfection now reaches the progression of prolific life as species genera and differentiation, or differentiate should be. Okay, but go ahead. The production into visible forms is brought about by. Now, the see, now that we've got this realm, now he's going to go further and say, now we can break this up into visible forms. The production into visible forms is brought about by the power of the Father of all that is. That is sense that is sensible. Yeah, do it again. Let's see. You can skip the line. Oh, sorry. The product no the production into visible forms is brought about by the power of the Father of all that is. Mm -hmm. But directed at the terrestrial realm so that all that is sensible is adorned with a beauty appropriate to itself. Just as the demiurgos in the realm of uh, uh, the, what we would call the intelligible produces everything, right? The whole cosmos is produced because Zeus wants to adorn everything. That's before anything reaches a terrestrial form. So, so in that sense, very clearly, uh, hmm. Zeus is acting as if he were the demiurgos on, a, on the level of the terrestrial life. Go ahead. Wow. And as each thing has its own time to be and its motion, it manifests the perfection of its being. 
Okay. The reason, look here, the reason each person has a particular destiny, right? A certain uh, life they chose, myth of her, mm -hmm. right? Each person has a destiny, a, a role, a model, right? And especially a daemon that makes sure that <clears throat> that is in place. But therefore, each role has a particular form. It has a measure, always. Measure and motion for each kind of thing that has an existence, of course, has a certain lifespan, right? a certain measure. <coughs> And therefore, everything has a certain motion appropriate to its particular species and particular right role of life. Okay, so that's the most general way of putting out these nine gods. Now, this is now a reflection drawn from the rest of uh, Proclus and Herbert. Accordingly, it is from this goodness that a procession of powers can extend to all bringing a cycle of existence that turns back upon itself to the glory that is itself. Right. That's a general statement covering the whole thing. Go ahead. The effect of these powers are found in every kind of thing, since everything has the character that has formed its being, having received power. Being. That's it. Yeah, do it again, please. The effect of these powers are found in every kind of thing, since everything has the character that has formed its being. Right. All the things that formed its being, therefore it has the character appropriate to everything that has formed its being. Go ahead. Having received power, it has a vitality that can turn about to know both itself and its source. To affect this turning about, it is naturally drawn to cultivate and develop along lines appropriate for its rise to a perfection that is akin to its origin. To preserve what it has become, it is guided by an intelligence that ensures it union, its union with the brilliance of its source. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The goodness that extends to all flow, the goodness that extends to all flows freely to those who are receptive to its receptive to its bestowal, and it is by returning through the procession of these powers that the likeness and the union with its source is realized. See, what's essential in this game is that it is not grace. Mm -hmm. Right? Essential to the idea of provenance. Each of these things have to work, has to do something to allow itself to receive that kind of gift. You have to match it. Therefore, it's not grace. Uh, hmm. Okay. I like that. Can I read it again? I like it. Go ahead. Well, I want to read that sentence again. Go ahead. The goodness that extends to all flows freely to those who are receptive to its bestowal. And it is by returning through the procession of these powers that the likeness and union with its source is realized. See, whatever, like whatever steps were necessary for goodness to proceed, going backwards is a philosophical recount of the same procedure instead of going down, going back, returning. Oh, God. The energy that radiates from it is drawn from that source that brought into existence the nature of the whole of this cosmos. The life-giving energy gives life to the soul, which then extends throughout the cosmos, bringing life to the whole. Now, so it returns. Okay, now, new, okay. Okay, go ahead. In the middle of that divine light, a wondrous chain extends... Right. Now this is a chain. 
In the middle of the light, okay? There's a chain. In the middle of that divine light, a wondrous chain extends to all that is. And this bond of heaven is the source of the wholeness of all things. It is this bond whose origin lies in that source of wholeness. And it is this that holds together every whole, makes each part a part of a whole, and is the source of the whole itself. For the bond is the source of all union, and from it the intelligible Logos radiates and purifies what otherwise would be dark and obscure. See, that bond, that chain, right, that chain is Logos. The Logos contains its gra in its grasp all the principles of symmetry discoverable in the intelligible, in the soul, and in nature. The principles follow the procession, and in its return it ascends back through each, mirroring the creative in its ascending return. The abiding the procession and the return are the ways symmetry of the whole displays its intelligible order. Wow, that's amazing. For all that has mind, it brings a realization that everything that comes to pass is in accordance with this Logos. The sharing of this Logos is the communication of what is good, and it is in this way that providence proceeds to all intelligent beings. The communication that manifests this goodness passes through each of the powers of procession, and so in the terrestrial world. This logos brings thoughts, images, feelings, states of minds, and awakening insights, both when awake and asleep. The dreams and daydreams communicate what has been ignored, and they have an insistence upon them that demands attention. Their meaning, or logos, manifests itself in the discovery of their analogical significance in what is only dimly perceived when unpacked. Excuse me, in what is only dimly perceived. When unpacked, they relate two progressions that, while similar, their connection is unsuspected. One progression includes elements of the present, whose analog can be discovered in the past. The language of both dreams and daydreams is cast in terms of metaphors that represent figures significant to the dreamer. Their states of mind are similars. Their state their states of mind are similes that echo past feeling states, while their meaning can be grasped in the way that, oops, what happened? Oops. All, mm. now, let me go back, because I don't have the page. Um, One progression includes elements of the present whose analog can be discovered in the past. The language of both dreams and daydreams is cast in terms of metaphors that represent figures significant to the dreamer. Their states of mind are similes that echo past feeling states, while their meaning can be grasped in the way that all allegorical uh, uh, allegories are understood, which is, of course, by identifying their hidden reference. The drama of a personal problem, either in the dream or the waking world, has its well-established sequence of stages in a progression of terms. Once the language of dreams is understood and applied, a skill develops that allows one to grasp the unapparent level of meaning for 
understanding the unsuspected false beliefs underlying human problems. Thus it is that the meaning of the dream or daydream always reflects the unapparent level of an intelligibility that communicates an excellence. Wait a second. Thus it is that the meaning of the dream or daydream always reflects the unapparent level of intelligibility that communicates an excellence that benefits the receptive and willing subject. The entire linkage of gods and the way they function traces the providence of the gods. Yeah, been translated, of course. Mm -hmm. That's my work. Yeah, keep going. While the author of this document has not been determined, it is evident that some have already guessed its source. But they prefer to remain silent, for they are reluctant to disclose its full meaning, since it is likely that it will bring more attention upon themselves than revealing the identity of the author. However, these few have shared insights in what they have gained from a careful study of this document, and these can be set out here. Clearly, in a world that seems too many to be without meaning and spiritual direction, there is here set out a wisdom that comes to us in our dreams and daydreams. Once the way to understand these kinds of communications becomes clear, we are brought to acknowledge that there is an unsuspected intelligence that has been communicating with us that meets the unique circumstances of our existence. Once this possibility is taken seriously, all else changes because it awakens us to the need to understand our life in totally new terms. For the idea that dreams have this kind of meaning brings with it the demand that we must learn to master what we have neglected for so long. The claim that dreams are a profound means are a profound means of communicating is as puzzling as it is disturbing because if it can be known that dreams are meaningful, then the origin and source of such intelligence needs to be addressed. For it is without doubt that we know we have not fashioned them ourselves, since it is the height of absurdity to believe that we possess the art to bring dreams into existence without knowing it, and that we are so wise as to offer ourselves a knowledge of our own lives that we didn't know we had, yet desperately need. If this were not enough, we are also aware that we have daydreams that come to us without our knowing why they come, nor do we understand their purpose and their role in our lives. We also know that we are often drawn by the power of daydreams and allow them to play themselves out. These daydreams, just like the dreams, are skillfully made without our having crafted them. They also communicate with an immediacy that we often find astonishing. So we have a skill we didn't know we have that are made for purposes we cannot fathom. Beyond this ignorance, we are at a loss to understand if these daydreams have a complementary role to our dreams. However, many have recognized that the images and thoughts that come to us unsuspected times may have some relation to our daydreams, for we do not have to be told that after experiencing some vivid image and thoughts that we become vulnerable to the onset of daydreams that are driven by these images. In the same way, many have realized in their own lives that daydreams and vivid images that come to us may be dress rehearsals for actions that it might be better to avoid, since we realize we would rather not act out the folly of some of our daydreams. Wow, thank you. Oh. I like that.
Well, she. Okay, I'll she, read it. She, the, our goal, though, Good. is to see whether this kind of language, now that we're going further in the time, is because from now on he's going to go, especially in the last, what we could say, the, la the last three, four stages. That's where we're going. Why is he going into the body? Why is he going into physiology? Well, he has porkies. What's the goal? To try to show that the physical body has to be in such a condition to receive both of those things. It, that one has to be receptive to gain it. Therefore, we have to take a look and see the same terms that we used before applied on this level. Whole, total, right? Progression. All of the same terms that we've been using, and especially that we put in here, are now going to be playing a feature as we proceed to the end of the work. So I thought it would, since I didn't like what we did last time about these gods, I decided to do this, and I was lucky enough to get that document from the cave. Just in time. No, no. And those that helped dig for it, I want to thank you. I see a good number of you are here. <laughs> So, what does he got to do? See, he's got to build this up. He has to have built into the work itself the means of reasoning to apply, to use. And this language that he's developed can be used for that purpose. Now he's got this whole rather curious section on divination. Right? Very interesting, right? Uh, this is a rather interesting challenge to set before men by the gods, see? <laughs> Divination is the most, to show what is the most useful and the most beneficial for men, both their present and future. Both of these are providence, aren't they? They're both providence, function of providence. So therefore, you see where we're going and why we're going to not skip and get out of the time is. I thought we'd go through the whole thing since we have nothing else to do on Friday night. And that has to be voted on and <laughs> Julie will count the votes. I will. Okay. But he has a question. I didn't know that. How were you able to perceive that? <laughs> He's over here making That's enough. <laughs> making comments? <laughs> no. What were the two? What, what was the both that you were just speaking of? What is the both? The both that you Both. Yeah. The prophecy. Dreams and divination. Okay, dreams and divination. Take a look. Ninety. Right, take a look at these quotes. Is that what he's doing there? Come on. Well, even if I said yes, and I'm taking a look, what was the point you were making about the two of them? Well, he's, he has to establish how to do it. This is a how to do it book, right? That's philosophy, how to do it. So therefore, there has to be a way of understanding what went on to apply it to dreams. And divination. And divination. Right. When you, but, say, and when you say when you say establishing a language a language, not a method. Can you when you say a language, um, does that mean a logos? Yes. That means a logos. Yes. Okay. In this in this particular no, in this no, case. No, no, no. Uh, like Plato is very interesting, like in book nine in the Republic, he talks about you need two things to look at dreams, law and logos, right? No most logos. And you have to therefore go back to see where Socrates' logos begins. And that goes way back earlier in the work. So you can, by a series of reasonings, establish a method, a way of proceeding. In the Republic. Now we, Yes. yes. And now we want to see what in addition he's doing here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he'd just be redundant. He seldom is redundant. So, 
So what, uh, the, the language, here, now remember, the, 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 the position is the language that he's using through here are going to be the key terms he's now going to use in the next f dealing with these two issues from this point on, because now with God of gods, he's now going to go into creation of the rest of the terrestrial world, and that's where we're going. And, uh, but really, any of you, especially Rod and Mark and other people who've gotten into this material, if you'd like to jump in on any Friday night and take any piece of this, I will certainly buy the coffee. I will offer the coffee. Look at this. 11 o'clock already. <laughs> What was that, Nancy? Oh, I really can't. <laughs> I said you lost your neighbor, your neighbor who was here for a short while. <laughs> she had enough. Good. Okay. <laughs> Providence differ than the chain of being. Just, uh, in other words, um, why is it necessary to establish a different, a different, uh, different dynamic in so far as anything that exists exists by virtue of its goodness or its unity? See, the question, I, I don't know whether, uh, I think we can take it just in terms of the image here. If this is a way of representing goodness, uh, or remember, it's a goodness that proceeds in, an, in a Usia-like motion. He says, look, this, is, this, by the way, is also picked up in Plato in uh, Myth of Ur. Right? Uh, assuming that this can represent providence, how can that finally come down in a particular form to these things is the issue. Like what language, what distinctions do you have to make one, under one assumption that it can move progressively, simply, all the way down to man. How can that which is so extraordinarily general whole, the beyond whole, Finally, he can get a piece of it to meet his particular needs. This is goodness. Hey, goodness. Not particular goodness. How can from that can to be a particular goodness for this guy smoking a, a cigar in Brooklyn? Would you agree at least one thing about it? There are a bunch of other people that are going to have to, likely to be receiving something. Well, then how can that take place if each has a particular need? Well, then if there is particular needs for each of these, then that has to be broken up in some way to be parceled out to meet the needs of these people. Now, what kinds of processes, what kinds of ideas could be placed in order to represent them? And, see, the, idea, the nice idea of a progression is that uh, if you have a true progression, then uh, there is no term that is missing. No gap, no term. Even though between any any odd, there's always a mean between them. Right, one, three, five, seven, so nine steps. Right, there always has to be a mean term which is comparable to both sides. But a principle, these are principles. In order to have this, that means we do not agree. Each one of these stages has to itself be fixed. Uh, 
between the first and the last term, right, there has to be, subsequently, there has to be something higher and lower to each one of them, right? And the, the higher must be its superior, and, its, and the one lower must be its inferior, and there has to be something that's continuous throughout. Then there has to be something that keeps this fixed, each one of these, because each one of these is perfect in respect to being at a particular stage. That is a perfectly accurate stage, and the whole thing must be perfection. Well, these are all ideas. How do you explain? Okay, can you now use that? Oh, by the way, this is a totality. This is a whole. Oh, uh, their division. How do they make the divisions? So he says, I'll tell you how. Uh, to begin with, you have to assume there has to be some multiplicity. Oh, given this, what's the next step? Multiplicity. As an idea, otherwise you can't then disperse it further. Well, going through these nine gods, the question would be, has that document I found in the cave, does it allow all of these terms going down? And it, and it comes all out of Proclus, by the way, except a couple of ideas. Right? So there were, um, in, we went through these nine. Pardon me? In these nine, all of the, the six uh, act, possible actions of the soul were all there? Uh, yes. Perfecting, yes. purifying, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. all the way turning about, mm -hmm. vitalizing, mm -hmm. generating. Mm -hmm. What? What are the, uh, is that, well, is that intentional so or is that all, it's a reflection? All of the processes being? that brought you into being have left a mark on your being. We can put it that way. Okay. Mm. And by that very factor, therefore, there must be a way going back. Mm. Right. And what are the three that aren't? Um, there were three that were not actions of the soul, and why aren't they? If they were part of this process, why didn't they end up as... I, I didn't tap to catch the Well, there was there was the protecting, the purifying. Oh, um, the five stages. Yeah. And there was uh, yeah. There was the vitalizing, turning about, and generating, and uh, what uh, there not generating. That's there, okay. Yeah. Vitalizing, turning about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, there were three others, and those were not. Those are not the so-called actions of the soul. How how did those leave their impression? Well, you see, his idea of protection, his idea of protection is, is, he calls it a guardian function. That keeps this in place. If that takes in place, then that allows perfection. But in order to proceed up, purifying. But you can't purify unless you turn around, turn around it, or you see a like hey, I want to change. And you can't do that without motion or energy or vitalizing. So there you have the five right there. That, right? Yes. I think the point you're raising uh, is a good one because uh, in, the, in the discussion on this, he does not use that. That's predominantly in the elements of theology. Well, uh, and this is also uh, 154, I believe. I think so. So we'll see if it's going to be helpful, I guess. Right. Well, we'll see if we come back. <laughs> <laughs> It is laborious, isn't it? Now that you have a translation, though. No. Oh, it's so yeah, it's laborious, you know. Yeah. I'm just like. Yeah, I can tired teach that. I can teach that, but only to people with three legs. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Because they're going to need the third one. Oh. oh. People with canes or something? Or four eyes. Okay. Glasses will do. Well, yeah. okay. Okay. People with glasses.